giving us is a season of the unparalleled, unprecedented favor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is a season of favor. It really is. Amen. It really is. It really is a season of favor. Mm -hmm. And it's important for us to understand it. It's important for us to open up our hearts to receive it. Um, we have a host of angels around us. It doesn't matter whether we see them or not. We know that the Lord said in the Bible, even if we don't believe that we have a host of angels, we know that the Lord said, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I am there. So if we don't believe that there's a host of angelic beings around us, at least we must believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is with us. Amen. Amen. We may not believe the angels and say, well, I don't know about angels. But do you know about the Lord Jesus Christ? That's right. Okay. So if we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is here, then, boy, it is well. We are more than who we see in the room. We are more than who we see in the room. This is a season of unparalleled favor. It is important for those words to sink into our spirits. It's important for us to open up our minds to actually receive that. What's favor? Favor is, they call it the unmerited, unmerited goodness or goodwill of the Father. Unmerited. Mm. I don't deserve it, but the Lord gives it. I've done nothing. I've done nothing to deserve it. Yet, the Lord says, here you go. Mm. That's favor. That's favor. The door, or there's nothing more important than the favor of the Lord to a man. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more important. The goodness or the goodwill of the Lord. Favor. Apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, who would you say in the Bible is the most favored? Apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, who would you say is the most favored person in the scriptures? Well, I do. Okay. Mary. He was certainly favored. Who? Mary. Mary. <laughs> Mary. And I take that from the word. That is true. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. David was certainly favored. But I take this one of Mary That's from true. the word. And we're going to go to that word. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're going to go to the word in Luke. Can't argue with the word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Surely David was favored. And it's not and a Joseph was And Joseph was fa favored. But, but, but this lady, Mary, I'm just taking these words uh, from the word yep. on Mary. So if we look at Luke chapter 1, uh, we're going to start with, um, let's start with uh, verse 26. I'm going to read from verse 26. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now, as I'm reading this, it sounds like Christmas already. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're playing Christmas music on the radio. And here that's today. right. It sounds like Christmas already, but hey, you know what? I receive it. It's Christmas for us Amen. in this house. Amen. Yeah, it's Christmas it's for true. us in this house. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, an angel was sent. Why was an angel sent? An angel was sent to announce something. Angels are sent to us to announce, to make an announcement. Messengers. Yeah, they're messengers. So there was an announcement uh, 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 to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice! Highly favored one. See where I got that from? <laughs> Rejoice. Highly, not just favored, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. And what did I say? I said, where two or more are gathered, he is there. Yep. Right? The Lord is with you. Well, the Lord is with us tonight. The Amen. Lord is with us. So we are also highly favored. Okay, rejoice, rejoice, be glad. So whatever may have made your heart sad, in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the angelic host, he said, rejoice, 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 rejoice. Highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed 
are you among women? Let's read a little bit further. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Amen. Amen. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, now listen carefully to these words, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Hmm. The Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Let's stop. And let's digest these words. An angel made an announcement and came to a woman called Mary. The angel said, you're highly favored. You have been chosen. Chosen for what? To carry the Lord Jesus Christ. The seed of Christ will be implanted into you. Now listen carefully. Because these words do not just pertain to Mary. That's why I'm saying, listen carefully. These words that were said to Mary actually also pertain to us who are able to receive it. The seed of Jesus Christ is going to be implanted onto you. The way that is going to happen, it's going to seem impossible to man. How this is going to happen is going to seem totally impossible. There has never been up to this moment anything like this. It is called the unprecedented favor of the Lord. There has never been in the history of man where a seed of Christ, seed of God himself, is implanted into a woman and the woman is going to give birth. The woman is going to give birth. It's never happened before. In the history of mankind, prior to this, nothing like that had never happened before. In the history of mankind, this was the first time something like this was happening. And it was happening to a woman called Mary. And the Lord says she's highly favored because she's going to carry a seed. Remember, it's a seed. And this seed of Christ, this noble seed, this anointed seed of Christ is going to grow full term into a baby. Now, think about what I'm saying. What was implanted? How did it happen? The Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. It makes me remember a verse, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for the Lord was with him. What was said to Mary? The Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Oh wow, it sounds like that. It sounds, so there's a similarity here. It sounds similar. There's going to be a seed of Christ that is implanted into a person. And that person will give birth to baby Jesus. This baby will not be aborted. This baby will not be a near-term baby. This baby will grow and come out. This baby Jesus, it's baby Jesus started as a seed. How do I know that? How do I know that baby Jesus started the same way you and I, in a regular human being, gives birth? How do I know that that's the same way baby Jesus grew? When the Bible says the Holy Ghost came upon you, a full term Jesus was not put in Mary's womb. It's true. It wasn't a, a baby, a full term baby. The Holy Ghost didn't put a full term baby into Mary's womb, it was a seed. 
the seed grew. When the time came, Jesus came out. When the time came, Jesus came out as a full-grown baby. Not near term, not near term, but a full-grown baby. Why? What happened? She was chosen, she was blessed, and God said, listen, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you will give birth. Mm. And God knew she would keep it a secret. <laughs> of course. God knew she would keep it a secret. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Mm. Just let it be. Just let it be. In due season, Mary gave birth. But here is the favor of the Lord. That's why I ask, who do you feel in the Bible was the most favored? Well, we read it. Rejoice, you highly favored mm -hmm. woman. You're blessed. You're favored and you're blessed. You've been chosen. Here's the point. Just like Mary, we too have been chosen. Mm -hmm. We too have been favored. Mm -hmm. We too have had a seed of Christ in us. We too, when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we too, the Holy Ghost also came upon us. Amen. The power of the Most High also overshadowed us. Amen. And the seed of Christ was put inside of us. Amen. Now here's the thing. Are we allowing the seed to grow full term mm. and, for, and for Jesus to come out fully mature? Mm. See, this is the favor of the Lord on us as well. We read about Mary and we are like, wow. But it is the same thing that the Father is doing because the same love that the Father has for Mary, the mother of Jesus, he has for me and you. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. The same love. Yes. The same love that the Father has for Mary, the mother of Jesus. In fact, let me go one step further. The same love, and you say, where did I find that from? Is it John 17? The same love that the Father has for Jesus Christ, he has for me. Amen. That's true. The same love, nothing different, Titus. The same love that the Father has for his son, Jesus Christ, he also has for me. Amen. And so guess what he did for me? He chose me. He called me highly favored and blessed, and he implanted into me the seed of Christ. The seed of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Prior to Mary, of this immaculate conception happen, happening to Mary, the world had never seen any favor like this before. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is doing it again. Mm -hmm. The Lord is expanding the way we think about Him. The Lord is expanding the way we think about the mother of Jesus, Mary. The Lord is telling you and I today that what he desires to do in this time, in this season of favor, is very similar to what he did with Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Lord is saying to us too that we are highly favored, we've been chosen. The Lord is saying that there is a seed of Christ that also has to come to a full measure in me as well. The same way that baby Jesus never died and he gave and came out. That's the same way that the Lord wants Jesus Christ to come out in me too. Why? Because I am highly favored and blessed. Amen. Just the same way Mary was. This is the expansion of the mind that the Lord wants us to receive in our own generation. This is the unparalleled favor of the Lord in our own generation. This, this world has never seen any man that is that fully possesses the Lord Jesus. Mm. This world has never seen until now, until this season of favor, this world has never seen a man that is completely possessed, completely possessed. You know what's interesting? We can believe that a demon can completely possess a man. Why can't we believe that Jesus can completely possess a man? Let me ask you that just plain question. If you and I can believe that a demon can completely possess a man, and we say that the man has completely been given over to a demon. A legion of demons is in that man. The man doesn't have his own mind anymore. He can't think the way a regular man should think. He has lost his mind because another person is controlling him. 
I said, well, let me ask you, if it's true over there, why isn't this other side true? Mm. Why would we accept this one and say, oh, yes, I believe that, but never believe or we cannot come to believe that it's possible that the Lord Jesus wants to do the same thing in me and you, fully possess us. Mm. Amen. Fully possess us. Brothers and sisters, this is the favor of the Lord. This is the unparalleled favor of the Lord. Why now, you may ask, why did it happen to someone great like the Apostle Paul in his time? Why didn't this happen to the disciples of Jesus Christ? Here's the answer. There is a time and there's a season mm -hmm. for everything. That's your answer. There is a time and there's a season. Just like I said, until Mary was implanted with the seed of Jesus Christ, nothing like that had ever happened in the whole world before. How's that? Mm -hmm. So there was a time that the Heavenly Father said, now is the time. Now is the time. I have chosen my servant Mary before the foundations of the world. She is here now. And when she is about 14 or so years old, I will send my angel Gabriel and announce what I'm going to do. I already have the foreknowledge that Mary would say yes. I See, see, we need to understand that God, also, God uses his foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. He already has the foreknowledge that Mary will not reject this announcement of the angel Gabriel. We need to understand that the Lord is not going to force Mary <laughs> to say yes. The Lord already knew that Mary was going to say yes. Through the foreknowledge of the Lord, he already knew Mary is going to receive this word. And when she receives this word, rejoice, highly favored one. You are most blessed of all women. Mary will receive the word. How can this be, Mary said? It's just an innocent question. It's not a question of unbelief. Mm -hmm. How? Mary was not asking a mm -hmm. question of unbelief or doubt. She was like, I don't know how, Lord, how can this be? Oh, it's very simple. Here's how it's going to happen. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. If you notice, after the angel said that, Mary stopped questioning. That's right. Guess what the end words of Mary was? Let it be according to your word. Yep. That's all Mary said. She was giving an explanation. It was, uh, let's see, it was a supernatural explanation. <laughs> Can you imagine, Bailey, if an angel came to you in your dream and you said, how can this be? He had said, well, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. His power will come upon you. And then you say, oh, well, let it be then, according to your word. That's all Mary said. Yep. And I, I like this question, too. and and. and with the angel coming and saying, you are highly favored. Yes. You are very blessed. Yes. And she's not married. She doesn't have come from a rich family. She doesn't have everything. So it's like, how can that be? How am I highly blessed? Now you're going to make me pregnant when I'm not married? It's like so many times the Lord comes and says, you're highly blessed. And then we look at the world and we say, well, I don't have this and I don't have that. And I don't have it all my ducks in a row here and there and everywhere. So her question was, yeah, how can it be? But also, how can that be? Yes. How can that be? How can that come to me? I'm just a simple 14-year-old mm -hmm. girl. How can that be? Out of all the women in the world, mm -hmm. how could it be? I'm just a simple girl. Yeah. You know, how can it be? Oh, yes, it can be. Let me explain. Let me further explain. The Holy Spirit will do it. And Mary said, let it be then. No more questions. No more, you, someone may have had a follow-up question. How will the Holy Ghost come upon me and overshadow me? Then it would be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. It's a, then it would be a question of unbelief. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost will do it. Nothing shall be impossible for him. Yeah. And so Mary just said, let it be according to your word. Here's the point. The same thing that happened to Mary in that way, in that form. 
the Lord is doing the same thing in another form in this generation. Amen. It is called the favor of the Lord. That's what it's called. It's very simple. It is called the favor of the Lord. Because again, the question is, how can it be that Jesus Christ can fully possess a man? After all, I'm a man of many sins. After all, again, we're again, see, after all, I'm not as holy as I should be. After all, I don't know my Bible as I should know it. After all, I can't quote all these passages. After all, I didn't go to seminary school. After all, there's some things in my past that I don't like. After all, after all, after all, stop it. Yep. The simple explanation to me and you mm -hmm. is the same as the explanation to Mary. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. Yeah. And the power of the Lord will overshadow you. Amen. And it will no longer be about your past or your present or your future. Greater is he. That's right. Greater is he that is coming inside of you, by the way. It's no longer about you, Olu. It's now all about Jesus Christ possessing you. Amen. Yeah. Again, as I said before, if you can believe the story in Mark 5 that a demon, in fact, a legion of demons possessed a man, my question to you is, why will you refuse to believe that Jesus Christ can possess you? So, That's my question. If you're still doubting, thinking that, well, how could this be? Well, my question is this. Then it's, it must be that perhaps you don't even believe Mark 5. Hmm. If you don't believe Mark 5, then of course you won't believe that Jesus Christ can possess anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to accept this, then you must accept that. Or you just deny all. Which is okay. At least we'll know where you stand. Rather than be kind of like this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Look for, yeah. At least we'll know. It's like, okay, I, I am not able to believe what I'm reading in the Bible. Well, see, that's different. Then we say, Lord, help this person. Open up their eyes that they may really see. Open up their understanding that they may see. That's a different prayer. Mm -hmm. Because basically that person is saying, I'm not able to, to believe what I'm reading in the Bible. I'm just not able to believe it. See, it's a different prayer to help that person. Mm -hmm. But we can't deny, if we say we believe, we can't deny this very simple logic. If it can happen here, it can happen here. Mm -hmm. And if it is happening over there, Satan is a copycat. That's right. He doesn't think of anything by himself, That's so who right. is he you. copying? He's not an originator. Thank you. Satan, it doesn't originate. He's not an originator. He's not a creator. God is a creator. Amen. Satan is a copycat. <laughs> Satan is a copycat. This is the first, is the main foundation of the favor of the Lord to you and I today. A season of unparalleled favor Amen. that is the foundational favor and the greatest favor that's why I said I asked the question who do you think in the Bible is the most favored there you go yeah. and now we can say we are we are just like Mary the mother of Jesus we are we are it's a spiritual favor but there's more than a spiritual favor in the Lord. That's one type of favor. There's also a material favor. Just like Madonna said, we live in a material world. You know that song? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are living well, more in Madonna a material world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are living in a Madonna said it in a song. She said, well, he, she, she said it. Go check it out. You know, after this message, you'll go listen to that song. We're living in a material world. That's what Madonna said. And guess what? I, I agree. Girl. She's a material girl. I believe it. I agree with her. We are living in a material world. Now, this world belongs to God. Yep. This world that we're in mm -hmm. belongs to God. He created it. Yes. But yes, we have enemy influences in this world. Why? Because Satan and demons have been released into this world. For some time, for some time, yeah. Satan and demons have been released into this world for a season. Not forever, but for a season. But let's not forget this fact. Who does this world belong to? That's right. The Lord. Yeah. 
the Lord. So the material favor comes from the Lord to the people of the Lord. You may ask, why is it so difficult for the people of God to have favor, material favor? Why does it seem like we have to fight and fight and fight and fight and fight for everything? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Mm -hmm. Why is it so difficult for the people of God? Why is it so difficult for the people of God to gather material favor? I was listening to the news yesterday. Uh, here's the statistics. 1% of the richest people in the world own 50% of the world's resources. Wow. One, Alex, 1% of the world's richest own 50% of the world's resources. Mm. Ha! Do you know where the majority or who the majority of the 1% are? Do you want to guess whether they're believers or unbelievers? They're in Saudi Arabia, aren't they? Thank you. I wasn't watching news. <laughs> no, but most of that 1% are unbelievers. Yeah. But did, did I not say that the world belongs to God? Yeah. <laughs> How come the world's resources, most of it is in the hands of unbelievers? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If the world indeed belongs... To us it doesn't. Huh? Yeah. To, us it doesn't. to us it doesn't. It's like, wow, I, I don't quite get that. <laughs> I don't get that. So, but there's something called material favor. Mm -hmm. There is something called material favor. And I'll take you through what the Lord took me through in this question. Because you have to say to yourself, listen, uh, th th there are many unbelievers who own the world's resources. But it appears that the people of God have to fight to get into this promised land of material favor. Why do we have to fight so much to get there? Mm. When after all, we are the ones that are the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, beneficiaries of it all, the, the Lord said. Sounds, mm -hmm. like, sounds like something the Jewish person would say. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. We're the children. Yeah, we're the, we're the chosen ones. The chosen There's ones. giants in the land. Yeah, we're the chosen ones. Why? Mm -hmm. And then the Lord took me through this. It is a season of material favor. Do not make a mistake. Mm -hmm. It is the season of material favor too. Yes. Do not make a mistake. Do not think that, oh wow, the Lord doesn't want to favor us materially. That's wrong. This is not prosperity preaching, by the way. This is just reality. <laughs> this is not prosperity. Yes, the Lord also wants to favor us in that way. Yes. Of course, the foundation is spiritual favor. Because the Lord doesn't want us to perish yes. with the world. Most of the unbelievers, if they don't become believers, guess what? They own and, lose it all. and they lose it all. What does it profit a man to own the whole world and yet lose his soul? But the Lord doesn't want that to be my portion or yours. And so he takes me through a different school. He has to take me and you through a different school. We can't go through the same school as others. If we are the children of God, he has to take us through a different school. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't want us to perish. We only here for a short period of time, even if I live to be 120. Yes. It's still a short period of time compared to eternity. Yes. And the Lord knows that. But in my natural self, I may not. Because I'm in the world of time. Yes. So I don't have that same sense as the Lord does. To the Lord, a thousand years is like what? A day. A day. A, day. a thousand years is like a day. Just a, a day. That's all. A man's whole lifetime is seconds in the Lord's eyes. But because I'm in the world of time, it's like, oh, oh, grab, 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 grab. No, 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 relax. The Lord is taking you and I through a different school. It's a different school. Once we understand it, we'll be at peace. Amen. And the favor will come. Amen. The favor will come. Look at this. In Deuteronomy chapter 7. 
Here is how the favor of the Lord comes. And this is the reason also why um, with the Lord's people is different. Mm -hmm. It has to be different. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Um, we'll start with verse 12. There is a condition that the Lord stated from verses 1 to 11. The condition of the blessings of the Lord material blessings of the Lord, especially as he talks about this, is love and obedience. Mm -hmm. Love and obedience. If you love and obey me. Mm -hmm. If. And this condition only stands for believers. Mm -hmm. See, an unbeliever doesn't follow this. They are not restricted by this word. Mm -hmm. An unbeliever. Hey, they can go and go and go and go and go. It's a different rule. But when I'm a believer, I live under this rule. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. I live under this rule. Why? Because I have tied myself to the Lord. That's why. If I untie myself to the Lord, then I don't live under this. But I have tied myself to the Lord. And He has tied Himself to me. And so it's like, hey, you ain't going nowhere. No. My hand is up. You ain't going nowhere. You want to go there? Hell no. You want to go there? No. We hear no, no. Yeah. yeah, it's different when I'm, I'm, I'm tied to the Lord. It's like if wherever He leads, I go. I am not the leader. We were talking about Dobermans, you said. What you said about Dobermans is like, oh, look, you need to tell them who's boss. Otherwise, they will lead you. Oh, God forbid that a dog is leading me. God forbid. So he leads and we follow. I want to go this way. He's going that way. He pulls me here. Come on, Olu. So there are conditions with the people of God. Again, make no mistake. The Lord wants to favor us. That's not what I'm saying. But I want to make it clear of some of the questions I have had. Why, Lord, do I have to fight to get to the promised land? Mm. After all, these giants that are there didn't fight. That's true. They didn't fight. Those giants that are there, that are occupying the land right now, those unbelievers, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, they didn't fight to get there. They didn't fight like I have to fight. Why, Lord, do I have to fight all these giants? Why does it have to be different for me? If you are being honest with the Lord, I think that at certain times you would have to ask that question. Sure. If you're being honest. And what the Lord told us one day, or told me specifically in a dream, was there's two things, Olu. Oh, you need to be honest and sincere. Two things. Yeah, you can be honestly angry. Mm -hmm. Hey, the Lord can take it. Yeah. Lord, I don't get it. Read the Psalms of David Absolutely. and how honest David was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a very honest person. Yes. No wonder he was called a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. I heard it in a dream. There's two things, Olu. Oh, Sincerity and honesty. Mm -hmm. Be honest with me. Tell me how you feel. Are you bothered about these things? Yeah. Yeah. I am bothered. I am bothered. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wants us to have that kind of relationship with him. I guess, Lord, I'm bothered about these things. These giants are in the land, they've occupied the land, but I have to fight for every tooth, everything. Even a pencil I have to fight for. Even to get a small pencil. <laughs> anything I have to fight for, I have to fight for everything. Why, Lord, do I have to fight for everything? Listen to this, Deuteronomy 7, verse 12. Then it shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your father. See, there is a covenant. If I belong to the Lord, there is a covenant, there is a contract. I've signed a contract. You say, when did I sign it? <laughs> when I said I give my life to Christ. <laughs> That's when I signed that contract. 
oh yeah, you know how they call people up. All the all you that is uh, want to give your life to Christ come up to the altar. Do you do they really know what they what, what they what they've signed up for when they go to that altar? There's a covenant. There's a covenant. When you go to the altar and say, "Yes, I give my love, my life to Christ." Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's great. But you've just signed a contract. You say, "Well, I never put anything on paper." Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, you did. That's what it means when you swear and say, and "Vow, I give my life to Christ." In essence, if I give my life to Christ, whose life am I living? Christ. Yeah, not mine anymore. I've given my life away to Him, mm -hmm. which means Christ can do anything He wants. That's what that means. Christ can do anything He wants with me. I wonder how many people really understand what it means when they say, I give my life to Christ. Really? Yeah. Oh, 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 not so quickly, mate. Not so quickly, not so quickly, not so quickly. You need to understand what you're saying. That's right. This vow, this confession, you need to understand what it really means. Because when you give your life to Christ, He owns you. Yep. He owns you. Your life is no longer your own. That's what that means. He owns you. It's a very serious thing. But I'm not sure that we know the seriousness of it anymore. I think it's become so mechanical these days that every pastor wants to say, Oh yeah, a hundred people gave their life to Christ. Oh really? Be careful, pastor. This is a serious thing. Do these hundred people know how serious it is for them to even make this confession? I'm very scared of such things now. Oh yeah, let's walk up to the altar. How many people give their life to Christ? As if this is some, some flimsy thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a serious thing to give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. My life is no longer mine. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. There's some things I'm not able to do because Christ owns me now. Yeah. People that commit their lives to the devil, they have a stronger understanding of what I'm saying than we do as Christians. When you commit your life to the devil or to a demon, that demon ha, won't let you go. Mm -hmm. I am telling you, I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. If a person acknowledges and gives their life to a devil, the devil won't let you go. Mm -hmm. And before that devil can let you go, wow, there is a series of prayers called deliverance. Mm -hmm. Deliverance is as serious as the Egypt, uh, Israelites being led out of Egypt. You know how serious that was? Mm -hmm. That's it. A lot Why? Of plagues. Huh? A lot of plagues. That's right. Because the devil says, they signed a contract. That's right. And the devil goes to the Lord, he signed a contract. He signed a contract. Again, remember what I said. If it's good on this side, you also have to think of the other side. Yeah, he knows the rules. Thank you. Very well. Yeah. We are ignorant. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's smarter than us. Yep. He's very cunning. He knows the rules. That's why, uh, like on, when we used to, we haven't watched it a while, but Narnia, mm -hmm. the White Witch, she, yeah. she comes to Aslan and she says, he's mine. That's what, there you go. And it's like, she calls it and it's like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, get it. It. No, I think no, it's no, part no, after no, when Aslan it. just roars. No, <laughs> yeah. She goes but flying like, back. But like he says that I was there when the walls were written. Exactly. So he knows exactly what he's talking about. Exactly, he does. Yeah. What I'm talking about are very serious issues that some people suffer from. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about. From that side, you also know this side. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, he's so jealous of you too. That's right. When you truly give your heart to him, he's jealous. Yeah. He'll fight. <laughs> He'll fight. He'll fight for you. He'll say, you mine. He's very zealous and very jealous. Yeah. It's a serious thing. So he, we continue. And, and, and uh, so it's a covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers. <laughs> the fathers made a covenant. They made a promise. And guess who they covenanted also besides themselves? When these fathers made a covenant with the Lord, guess who they also covenanted? 
their children. This is a poor household. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be like, yeah. Even some that haven't had children yet, they said, whatever children I'm going to have, I covenant them to the Lord. I did it. I did it before I had Taylor and Chase. Whatever children that I ever have in this world, Lord Jesus Christ, they're yours. Mm -hmm. I covenanted them to the Lord because I know that they're safe with Him. Mm -hmm. I covenanted them before they were born. How do I know to covenant? That's what happened to me, by the way. It took my mom a long time to have a boy. And so she made a vow to the Lord. If I have him, he's yours. He's mm -hmm. covenant. Covenanted. You can do whatever you want with his life. That's why I can't go left, I can't go right. Mm -hmm. I'm covenanted. I understand what a covenant means. It's a very serious business. Yeah. And I wish that Christians would understand what this really means. But I think that in our culture, some things have kind of, let's see, it's been so flimsy. You can always get out of a contract. Thank you. <laughs> Look at the legal system that we live in now, oh, yeah. and you compare that to, if that's what you think that the law of God is, oh, well, you can just hire a good lawyer and you can do whatever you want. That's right. Oh, yeah. Here. You just ah. experience that. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then man forms something called a covenant marriage. I'm not even going to go into that <laughs> because it has its upside and downside. Yeah. You covenant yourself to a demon that you thought was an angel, good luck. Yeah. You're in a covenant marriage. Yeah. All of a sudden you've tied up the hands of that person, that poor woman, or that poor man. But again, like I said, that's just a side note mm -hmm. on that. So, a covenant to the Lord, oh yeah, it's a serious business. Covenant means that, hey, grab them, they're yours. Now listen to this, and he will love, <laughs> and he will love you. Listen to the benefits of this covenant. No wonder my mom covenanted me to the Lord. She must have read this. He will love you. <laughs> yeah, the Lord will love you. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I mean, the Lord chases those he loves. How's that? <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, my mom forgot that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll tell you about Hebrews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Lord chases those he loves. Yeah, yeah. He's chosen. He's loved. Yeah, good. But guess what? Yeah, he's really mine. Uh, he, he, he will love he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock in the land of which he swore to your fathers to give you. So now, uh, all those things are material favor of the Lord. That's what he wants to bless us with. It's true and it's real. The question that I ask, why is it so? Or why does it appear that you have to fight to get these material things, generally speaking now, than those that are unbelievers? Here's the answer. God has to put his stamp on anything that concerns you. Anything that concerns his child, his son, his daughter, there has to be a stamp which is, I made this up. God made. God made. A stamp called God made it. There has to be a stamp that says God did it. God made it. Just like, you know, Sweden is very proud of Volvo. Right? Made in Sweden. The English are very proud of Rolls Royce, made in Great Britain. America is very proud of the Ford, I think, uh, number one selling Ford. Is it the Explorer or is it uh, F-150? F-150 is the number one selling Ford. Ford is very proud, made in America. Of course you ought to be proud. So if a human being is that proud of their product, what do you think of the Lord then, of his product? Made in heaven. Yes, God made. Boom. Everything that we possess has to have God made on it. See, even some silly Christians say, I am self-made. What? Wow. Self-made millionaire? And you're calling yourself a Christian? You're not self-made. Hmm. If you're saying that you're self-made and you're a believer, 
ah, you're not understanding who you are and who God is. Correct. You're not so, anything that pertains to God and His children has the stamp of God made on it. Why? Because it is through this means that God glorifies himself. Mm. You want to get a house, the Lord says you're going to have to fight for it. Mm. Why? Because the Lord has to put a stamp on it. God did it. Mm. That way, Olu or Sophia don't end up saying, oh yeah, we did it. We were so smart. <laughs> oh, we prayed that it happened. No, God did it. He put a stamp on it. God said, I will favor you. He put a stamp on it. God wanted to favor Anna. She had the prophet Samuel, and she had five other children. But guess what? God had a stamp on it. Yeah. You know how long it took Hannah to have a child, to have the prophet Samuel? Long. long time, long time, long time. Yet, the other woman was just having children upon children upon children upon children. True. But because she was a child of God and God owned her, God had to put a stamp. God made it yeah. so that his name may be glorified. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying that the Lord wants to favor us, but there's going to be a stamp. There's going to be a mark of God on it. Yeah. There's going to be a mark of God on your favor. Yeah. Bailey, where you're going in your life as a doctor, there's going to be a stamp of God on it. Amen. And brother, anything that the Lord gives you, that he give you all the silver and gold, give you all this favor, his stamp has to be on it. That's right. If his stamp is not on it, then you are not any of his. Because here's the thing, what differentiates you from the rest of the world? Well, if God doesn't have his stamp on you, Sophia, God made. I'm sorry. Yeah, I hurt you. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was getting excited. I don't know, I don't know, how, I don't know if I did it too, too oh, strong. God made yeah. now. God made. Boom. Stamp. Stamp. You got the God stamp on it. Boom. You know, Jehovah. Boom. Stamp on it. Then you're none of his if there's no stamp. Where's the testimony? That's right. Where's the glory? Yep. Where is it then? It's true, brother. Unbelievers don't glorify the Lord. They just say, I worked hard. Yep, That's true. all they say. They just say, I worked hard in school. They just say, nobody ever gave me anything. I've heard even a believer say that to me, to my face. Nobody ever gave me anything. I'm looking at him and saying, wow. How could you say that? Yep. You must not understand the ways of the Lord if you're saying that nobody ever gave you anything. No, this is wrong. If you are a real son or daughter of God, there has to be a stamp on your life. Amen. God made it. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, once we have this foundational understanding, we won't be uh, anxious. Mm. We won't be troubled in our spirit. Mm. We won't be angry, wondering, how come it's happening to them and it's not happening to me? Mm -hmm. How come everything in my life has to be so difficult? <laughs> we won't ask those questions anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord would have widened her understanding to see that, yes, I'm going to favor you, but it has to have my stamp on it. Yeah. It has to be God made it. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we're coming into a time of unprecedented favor. Amen. I'm not just talking about spiritual, by the way. Amen. I, have, I talked about the spiritual first because that is just the foundation of who we are as yeah. Christians. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is that we're also coming into a time of unprecedented material favor. Amen. Material favor. Amen. We are coming to that time because I, God desires to do much with us. Amen. We need some silver and gold. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need silver and gold to do it. How do I know? Well, see, an angel made an announcement. I said, well, an angel came to you, Olu, like Mary, and talked to you? Yes, an angel made an announcement. How does an angel make an announcement? Through dreams, 
through prophetic words, mm. through visions. The Lord said, before we moved into the house, and I will show you my notes, the Lord said, we were praying, I remember specifically, Sophia and I were praying. It was uh, an unscheduled prayer. How about that? It wasn't, you know, how you wake up in the morning and you say, I gotta pray, or you, you say, before you go to bed at night, you say, I gotta pray. This was an unscheduled prayer. And I just remember, I remember exactly where we were. And it was an unscheduled prayer. And I broke out into a song that the Lord gave me. He touched my life with his hands and my life changed. And all of a sudden, the prophetic word began to come. I quickly grabbed my notebook and my, <laughs> and my pen and I started to write. Oh, wow. The Lord said that he's going to give you this house. And here are the things that you will see. As you enter the house, you will see the back of it, you will see the pool in the back, you will see a mirror, there is a laundry room with a window, there, and, and it was so detailed and specific. And, and four numbers. And four numbers. You look at this, four, you four. say it has five, yeah. but there's two fours. Yes, <laughs> there you go. And I started to write down feverishly what the Lord said. It was a time of favor. It was a time of announcement. It's no different from what you and I just read in the Bible. An angel came to Mary and announced to her, you are highly favored. Well, the Lord has creative ways of speaking. That's right. I don't have to have an angel from heaven come down and speak to me and say, Hey, Olu, let me give you the details of this house. No. <laughs> the Lord can use my mouth, her mouth, your mouth, her mouth, her mouth. He can give me a dream and download all the information in a dream. Lower he, the exactly. He can do it, anything he wants to do. All I have to do is say, yes, Lord. And that's what we said after that day, after the notes. I said, wow, yes, Lord. Let it be according to your word. Amen. We didn't say it. He said it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with what the Lord said. And the reason why I'm saying that we are in a season of unprecedented favor is that that is not the only divine visitation. Mm -hmm. There's been other divine visitations of the things that the Lord has spoken yet to be fulfilled, but surely will be fulfilled. Mm. If the Lord can speak and do this, uh, why would he not do the other things that he has said? Mm. Why would he not? Is it not the same Lord that said, I will give you this? Mm. Of course he is. So why am I doubting that, okay, if he can do this, he can't do the others? Mm. I know that we're going into a season of unprecedented material favor. Mm -hmm. Mm. And the material favor is so that we can have all the resources in our hands to do the work that the Lord has called us to do. Mm. Amen. There are many people in our nation, in our city, first of all, that are suffering. Mm -hmm. Some are suffering just from material needs, mm -hmm. basic not material needs. There are people that need to be fed, the homeless they just need food. They are people that need clothing. People that need housing. Yep. But the Lord has said, not only are we giving you the resources to build these places, for people to come and to be fed a meal, but for them also to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. Why are you standing, Olu? I'm only standing because the Lord has made me stand. That's it. How are we able to provide food only because the Lord did it? Mm -hmm. Why should I give you food and not tell you about what the Lord, the, the, where the resource was coming from? Mm -hmm. To me, I would be an unfaithful steward. If it was the Lord that really blessed me and you, if it was the Lord that really blessed all of us, mm -hmm. he gave us the resources to help people, to feed people. To get people out of the pit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't we say that? Do you know where this came from? It is the Lord Jesus Christ that did it. Yeah. I have nothing to do with it. This is the testimony. This is our testimony, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. This is our testimony. Mm 
That's why the material goods are fought to a nail also by the devil. Absolutely. The resources need to be in the right hands. The hands of the people that we use it. That the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified. That favor is coming. Mm -hmm. It is coming. It is coming. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is believe mm -hmm. and we shall see it. Mm -hmm. We believe and we shall see it. Mm -hmm. We shall see it. You will remember this word in this house. Amen. That this word was said in this house. And so when it happens, you will say, wow. Wow. The Lord said it and the Lord fulfilled it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We have no one else to thank, but thank you, That's Lord. Right. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Yeah. He has brought us through the fire, mm -hmm. through the flood through false brothers and false sisters, through the demonic hands of the devil himself, yeah. trying to hold us back. Yeah. But he's brought us into the promised land. Mm -hmm. It is in the promised land that all the favor comes, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you read that Deuteronomy 7 again, yeah. you will find out that all those favors came in the promised land. Mm -hmm. And they weren't in the promised land until the old generation died off. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. We are in our own promised land. Amen. Almost three years now since the Lord called us together as a group. As you can see, just like in the Bible, the first, there were a number of people that never made it to the promised land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. A number of people. For whatever reason, even though the Lord said, I am going to do wonders in this group. You're going to see my mighty hand in this group. You're going to see healings in this group of miracles. Yet, some people allowed the devil to steal them. I said, wow, look at how the devil came. Of course, it's cunning. He'll come a number of different ways. Absolutely. He's not a fool. Mm -hmm. He's done this a few times. <laughs> We're not the first. <laughs> We're not the first that the devil is going to attack. Right. Of course, he's going to do it in a certain way that, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, yeah. That's just the way it is. But, brothers and sisters, I want you to agree with the Lord's words. We're there. Amen. It is a time of unparalleled faith. Amen. We need to receive the words. We need to be like Mary and say, let it be according to your word, Lord. Let it be. Amen. How is it going to happen? Very simple. The Holy Ghost will come upon us and the power of the Most High will overshadow us. Amen. That's how it will be. Praise God.